like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my third verse again through me can you say this many dangers tolls and snares I have already come tis grace that's brought me safe thus far and grace will lead me home let everything that hath breath praise God praise God praise God praise God praise God Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God, oh praise God, praise God. You may be seated. Sing, play, consider the lilies. Thank you, Lord. Consider the lilies. by the master who watches them grow. 
and we have a <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Full of love. Thank you, Lord. He really cares. <laughs> When your head is bowed low, consider the lilies, and then you will know may I introduce you to this. Of mine who hangs out the stars <laughs> tells the sun when to shine. <laughs> he kisses the flowers each morning with dew, but he's not. Thank you, Lord, to care about you. And we have a heavenly Father. Sing it, church. With eyes full of mercy and a heart full of love. He really cares when your head is bowed low. Consider the lilies, and then you will know. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He really does care. They ain't a flower that comes up in the spring and wilts in the fall that He don't see it and give it strength to grow. They ain't a tree that puts forth the bud in the spring and every leaf that trickles to the ground and turns to dust. He gives it the grace to grow. There's not a sparrow that falls from the sky that He don't attend every funeral. He knows every one. He gives the birds the ability to fly and the bugs to catch to feed the babies. And so much more are you more precious than them. Hallelujah. Ain't you glad you got a God up in heaven? Hallelujah. That don't only give you the strength to take one step and put it in front of the other and give you the breath to breathe in and lift your hands and praise the Lord. But while you was yet dead in your trespasses and sin, Jesus Christ loved you enough to keep the protecting hand of the enemy away from you. If, if the devil had his way, Homer, you'd be in hell this morning. But I want to say thank you, Jesus. Hey, I said thank you, Jesus, for the protecting hand that come down around me when I was yet unlovable. He loved me enough how to keep me from dying and going to hell. I want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. These times we think he don't care. Where are you, Jesus? Where are you? But he's right there. He's got his arms wide open. Amen. Consider the lilies. Consider the lilies. He knows where you're at this morning. Amen. These folks this morning need something from God. Y'all gather around them. Let's pray with them. Hey, this is why we're here. Thank you, Lord. This is why we're here. This, we're in no hurry. We have no, we have no intentions of changing God's order. Whatever it is God wants to do, this is what we want. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Grace is needed. There's times, Lord, that we need you greater than others seemingly in our life. Sometimes, Lord, our cup is full. Sometimes it's empty. Sometimes it's even broken. But Lord, I'm so glad that through your grace you can help us in whatever avenue we're going down. Sometimes the path of the Lord seems very don't know which way to go. Sometimes, Lord, it's confusing to think that you would lead us where we are. 
God, I ask you to help us to trust you. To trust you. To trust you. We love you, Jesus, God. We ask you to put your arms around every situation in this building. God, we ask you to please move. The hearts that are broken, we ask you to mend them, Lord. Thank you for tasting what you did on Calvary so we could taste grace. Thank you, Jesus. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. How honorable it is to be in your family. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Jesus. See, the troubles that you have, you can bring anything to Him and He'll take it. If you're broken, just give Him the broken pieces, He'll take it. There's nothing that He can't handle. Just hold tight till I tell you. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. What a God. That a baby was the promise they've been waiting for. 
Who would have thought that this little child would be King, our Savior and Lord? From a dark and lonely stable there rose a holy melody, the humble beginning of everything with one cry. to this the Messiah hanging on a cross who would have thought that salvation's plan would come at such a cost as the crowd mocked and laughed he took his final breath and cried, it is finished, oh, but it wasn't the end with one cry. The sin dead was paid for all the
some resurrection morning when the redeemed are gathering in I'll be in that royal number when they call my name as they all join in and sing hallelujah to the king I'll cry with a joyful sound Lord here I am here I am here I am I'm the one to share and nine but he left the full to find one little lost lamb and here I am when old Gabriel blows that trumpet and we're called up in the air in less time than one split second we'll be changed from here to there there will be no grief or pain perfect peace and joy shall reign home at last i shall proclaim lord here i am sing church here i am here i am i'm the one to share And nine, but he left the fold to find one little lost lamb, and here I am. Praise the Lord. I'm glad he found me. One of these days we're getting out of here. You glad to be in the Lord's house? Good to see you this morning. Appreciate you being here. Good to see our visitors with us. Amen. I do desire your prayers that God will help us and anoint us. Daniel chapter number 3, the book of Daniel chapter number 3. I'll try not to be before you too long, but I do have a message from heaven. And so I need your prayers. I need the anointing of God that God would help us just a little while. Amen. Will you do that, please? I'm just a vessel. I'm just a person like you are. But God has called me, but I need His touch. I need His power to try to help us just a little while this morning. Very familiar scripture. I've never preached on this before, but I need His touch that God would help us. Verse number 19. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. Daniel chapter 3, verse number 19. And the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. He commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and go cast them to the burning fiery furnace. And these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments and were cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. 
Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. That's all that I'll read. Thank you for standing in reverence to the Word of God. We need a touch from heaven this morning. Amen. I want to preach if the Lord will help us and the Holy Ghost anoint us just for a little while. Amen. On the need of a furnace. The need of a furnace. Now, I'm thankful this morning that God gives us what we need when we get there. Amen. But I, I was thinking about these men here, and uh, there's a lot in these scriptures, and I'm just going to go as the Holy Ghost would lead me, and I'll stop when he says stop. Amen. But I need his touch, and I need his power. Amen. The, 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 the verse, uh, chapter number three in the book of Daniel is the only chapter in the whole book of Daniel uh, that you don't hear the word Daniel mentioned in the scripture. Amen. Daniel is taken out of the scripture. Amen. In this, the whole book of Daniel seems to be circled around Daniel. Amen. Seems to be the person, Brother Ethan. Amen. That everybody kind of looks up to, tries to uh, kind of follows the lead of. Amen. The man that uh, interprets the dreams. But in this scripture, Brother Homer, amen, here Daniel is taken out of uh, the picture. And uh, I want to say this morning, I'm just going to say this by bridging through a lot. Amen. I appreciate the people that God has put in my life. And I appreciate, amen, the people that I look up to in my life. And I appreciate the, uh, the people down here at Beth Eden Baptist Church and, and help scotch each other and, and help hold each other up. I don't know if you know it or not, but there's been a lot of times that amen, we need each other. Did you know that? Amen. We need the friendship of each other. Uh, there's been a lot of times that I've been down and weary and discouraged and, and uh, it takes a text message from you or a phone call or a prayer uh, that helps hold each other up. Amen. But can I say there's going to be days in your life amen, to where Daniel's going to be taken from your life. Amen. You're going to be standing all alone and you're going to have to determine it in your heart amen whether or not you're going to go because of Daniel or because of yourself and God amen I'm thankful amen I appreciate the raising that my mom and daddy gave me amen I love them and thank them for taking me uh, to the house of the Lord but I got a hold of something uh, one night on the altar uh, that mom and daddy couldn't give me amen I'm thankful when mama ain't there uh, my mama's planted over yonder on the hillside uh, mama's gone but I'm still in the way Amen. My daddy, there's times uh, that I can't get him on the telephone, uh, but I'm still in the way. Uh, can I say I'm not in this for you? I'm not in this for mom and daddy. I'm in this for myself uh, because there is a rest uh, for the people of God. Amen. You want to say hallelujah uh, for the people that God's put in my life. But I want to say I want to thank God most of all uh, for moving on the inside of my heart. And when ain't nobody else around, he's still God. When the days are dark, he's still God. When the questions go unanswered, he's still God. I want to say thank God he's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. He's on the throne. He'll always be on the throne. And can I say I love him for being everything I ever needed. Daniel ain't in this scripture. The one to tell him to do and not to do is gone now. Now it's left up to them. Are you going to stand? Or you're not going to stand. Amen. Determination. You'll never make it if you're not determined. Amen. Amen. You've heard me say this, and I'm a country boy, and I'm proud of it. But I can, I got a dog up there in a cage, and I can go in the cage and lock the gate behind me, pat my leg, it'll jump right up there, and I'll pet it. I'll pour feet out and that thing will go around around that bowl, come right back, jump upon my leg. Amen. But it's inside the four walls of that cage. It's forced to love me. Did you hear what I'm saying? But when I open that gate and let it go, it's going to take more than a feed bowl to make that thing stay by my side. It's going to take a love for the master. Hallelujah. Amen. I can tell my children, my boys sitting beside my wife, you're not going to do it. Stay away. Get out of there. You're not going. Amen.
and they got to do it because I say. But there's going to come a time to where it's like Kayla and Kendra. They get out from under my wing and they've got to decide. I can't stake them down forever. Amen. But I can put in them. Amen. The joys of the Lord. Amen. Can I say there's more to this? Amen. The, the do's and the don'ts. Can I say he's a better friend than I ever imagined he could be? Hello, ain't he a lily of the valley? Has he ever been with you at the hospital when you don't know what you're going to do? When you're standing at the head of the casket and you think your world's about to end, he'll put his arm around you and he'll walk with you and he'll talk with you. Thank God I'm glad he's more than a person. He's a friend. He's an almighty God, but he's a loving friend and I'm glad he's in my heart. Hallelujah. You got to have a determination. Amen. The furnace in your life will figure out if you're determined or not. Amen. I hate to tell you you need a furnace, but we all need a furnace. Amen. That sounds rude and crude, but we need one in our life. Are you determined? I heard what you said this morning, Tim. Amen. I'm just picking out people. I heard what you said. The devil told me not to come back to church. But you're here. You must have a determination. Are you determined to make it from this brown carpet to the streets of gold? Does the devil fight you, preacher? If you could only get inside this head in the middle of the night, the warfares that I fight, amen, are saying, the devil telling me to compromise, let back a little, amen, do this or do that, amen, but he's a liar and he's the father of it, amen, I tell you, don't compromise, amen, this whole time way. It don't make no difference what the world says, amen, I follow God not because because I'm staked down or hemmed up. But I want to stay at his feet because I love him. I said because I love him. I'm not here this morning because I feel like I have to be. I'm here because I want to be. And I love him because he's everything to me. Amen. The furnace will take, see how determined you are. Amen. The Bible said that here come all them governors. And the word got back to Nebuchadnezzar and said, there's three boys over there and they're not bowing. Hey Amen, you need to do something about it. There's some young people in here this morning and you need to make up your mind what you want to do. You need to be determined because the furnace is coming. The furnace is coming. How many times have you broke under peer pressure? I have. Come on, be honest. Is anybody here broke under peer pressure? Most of you went down the long road of sin that you went down if it wasn't for peer pressure. Come on, try. Drink one. Smoke one. Come to the party. Do this or do that. You went with good intentions, but you had no determination. Amen. Way down yonder in sin's prison, you went. Drugs and alcohol. I could go on till daylight. Oh, ain't you glad? Thank God that they rose a sheriff and made a set of footprints in your world. Amen. Where the devil throws you away. Jesus come a walking right in your problem and your sin and he brought you up out of that horrible pit. Thank God my feet is sitting on a solid rock this morning. The world ain't gonna do nothing but let you down but Jesus gets sweeter and sweeter as the days go by. Hallelujah. Amen. I'll never forget that what you told me about that meth laying in this. It was meth wasn't it? Led in the middle of that trail over at Lake Junaluska. Walking around that trail, there it laid, and you had a, you had a choice to do. Are you going to take it or leave it? Ain't nobody around. Homer, you could took it. Nobody to ever know except for him. But I don't want to let him down when ain't nobody looking. I want him to be pleased with me when ain't nobody looking. We all have hard days, but Jesus Christ has got an all-seeing eye. I said an all-seeing eye. Hallelujah. I'm glad if you're determined, you can make it in the furnace. I said you can make it in the furnace. Amen. Your faith is going to be tested. Amen. They're going to threaten you. They're going to heat the furnace up. Amen. The furnace like it was was hot enough to 
to kill anybody, but they're going to threaten their faith. Amen. Are you going to stand or are you going to live for God or are you going to bow? Amen. Let's play all this music and see fell bow down. Hallelujah. Can I tell you, the world's got all kinds of music that they're playing trying to get us to bow. Amen. The, the church is everywhere. It's changing to try to draw the crowd and try to be more like the world. Amen. Then they are God. But can I say amen? They may not be many of us standing, but as long as God's is standing with you, that is all that matters. Can I say God? Amen. Can still walk in the fire? I say can still walk in the fire. Lord, help us to be determined. Help our faith, amen, to be solid. I'm not going to be it. I'm not going to bow. Amen. It don't matter what you say. I'm not careful to answer thee, O King. We are not going to bow. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I believe in the old time way. I believe in old timey stuff. If amazing grace won't do it, we might as well go home. Amen. Amen. It's not changing anything. It's just getting back to what we used to be like. So it's ourself that needs to be changed. And so when people walk in the back of the church, it's not a feeling that get in their feet that makes them sway back and forth that says, hey, I love this feeling. If that's all you got, Hank Williams Jr. can do the same thing to you. Amen. He can make you sway. Get goose pimples. Goose pimples ain't got nothing to do with it. Amen. But it goes much further than goose pimples. It gets down in your heart when the Holy Ghost power gets down in there. Amen. It lets you see where you're at. Amen. It makes me do things I don't realize I can do. Amen. Because the great I am that told me he'd be with me. I've got a determination to go to heaven. How about you this morning? Amen. Our faith may be tested, but I'm not going to change. Amen. I'm going to stay with the Bible I read. I'm going to stay with the music I listen to. I'm going to stay with the God I'm with because he's done proved himself to be faithful. Amen. Ruth said, you might as well quit telling me to go back. I'm going with you. Where you live, I'm going to live. Where you die, I'm going to die. And I'm going to let your God be my God. Amen. Your God's going to be tested. Amen. How many of us ever went through a furnace spiritually? Nobody likes looking at them. Is it possible that you can be as faithful as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and let the outside force bind you. We have a need for a furnace because these people in this building, including myself, that you can do everything in your power, but your mind gets so captivated with things until it'll bind you. You get bound with hatred, bound with hard feelings, bound with jealousy, Bound with all kinds of things. Shut up in our own mind while we sing in the choir and raise our hand. I could follow you everywhere this week. Amen. And check off everything. You ain't done nothing wrong. But in the corridors of your mind, you've got a warfare coming on. Amen. That'll bind you down. It'll take your praise. Amen. Come on, talk to me. Amen. It'll take. They bound the, them three Hebrew children and throw them in the midst of the fiery furnace. And the Bible said they fell down bound in the midst of the fire. Amen. Can I say we're in need of a furnace. Amen. To break some of these yokes off of our mind. Hey, some of you go to bed every night. Amen. If you'd be honest, these thoughts of suicide will creep through the corridors of your mind while you sing in the choir on Sunday. The devil's telling you to end it on Monday. Amen. But I want to say, shame on the devil. Amen. We need to say, get thee behind me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Don't listen to the the voice of the enemy or it'll get you down. He don't ever quit talking. But Jesus Christ, if you'll depend on him, he'll help you burn off the things in the furnace and you can come out on the other side of singing victory in Jesus. Hey Amen. Those people in here this morning, if you'd be honest with me and I could put your heart on the wall, these things that you fought with this week and ain't nobody knows about it. But you and God. But while I was, we come back off vacation yesterday and I was working around the house, piddling around. And God spoke this in my heart. We need a furnace. We need a furnace. 
as Brother Johnny made out this. Thank God for your vision. I've seen it work and it'll still work. 24 hours in a day with an X beside it. The one that's got an X beside it is a volunteer soul that'll pray the hour that you've got your X beside. When you start spending so much time with that master, he has no choice but to show you the error of your own way. Amen. You get so open before him until he starts shining a light in your own soul. Lord Jesus, that's when. Amen. Ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. You ever heard that? Amen. We've reached a generation to where we won't tell our children what to do. Oh man, I'm going to have to preach to the wall on that one. We let the children tell us what to do. Amen. We've put up the hickory, put a, started standing in the corner. I'm just going to look at the floor and walk. My daddy, would, he always sat where Kayla's sitting in the church where I was at, where I was raised, put his arm up on the back of the seat, and it didn't matter where I was in the church. That's all he had to do. Because I knew when I got home, he was going to wear me out. Now you get in trouble at the schoolhouse. Then the mom and daddy goes down there and jumps on the teacher. Instead of saying, if he gets in trouble down there, you write me a note. You bust his hide and I'll bust it again when I get home. Child abuse, cry all that garbage you want to. And now we've lived to a generation of pure rebellion. Amen. Who's going to tell a preacher get behind the pulpit? Amen. If you're going to do anything, pat him on the back. Please don't tell him there's a hell. They might not come back. Amen. I want you to know when you stand in judgment, whoever your preacher is, you'll be glad he told him there was a hell. Amen. Because there is a hell. Amen. Listen to me this morning. Amen. We need to get the rebellion out of our heart and to say, God, tell me. Show me what you want me to do. If there's anything in there that don't need to be, Show me and give me the grace through the furnace to burn it out of my life. Amen. Amen. So, as we go through this prayer, are we getting closer to God? Have we come up against the things that God has already told you a long time ago you need to get rid of and you ain't done it yet? You come up against that again. And you wonder why things is blowing apart in your marriage, blowing apart in your work, blowing apart. Hey, everybody has days in their life where everything just blows apart. But if you know you're living circumspectly before God, you know that all that's going to work together for good. But if you're not where you need to be, then every time something blows up, if you're a child of God, it's automatically going to say, is this trying to get me back to where I know I'm supposed to be? The devil has all kind of counterfeits to give you something. But all you need is God. The time you have with Him will pull you close to Him. Did we not cast four men bound? This is about the fourth time this one word bound has been mentioned since I started reading in the first part of this scripture. Bound. Bound. In the midst of the fire. He stood up astonished. Why, did, why was he astonished? Because there was three boys that was determined. They was anchored in their faith. And they was anchored in their God. Amen. I'm not going to move from the God that I serve. I'm not careful to answer the old king. He's able to deliver me. But if he don't, amen, can I say in redneck terms, he's still God. Amen, you may put me in there and I may burn up. But the next breath I'll be over yonder running around saying, holy, 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 holy. This is not my home anyway. I'm just a passing through. Hey, some of you need to get a determination. Hey, some of you need to figure out who your God is. Are you going to serve the gods of this world? If you do, you'll wind up in trouble. If you'll serve the true God, you can come through this furnace stronger than you was when you went in. Amen. While he begins to play this morning, I'm going to be real plain. Real plain. Real plain. 
There's some of you that are at a place that you can make decisions on your own. And you've got them right in your hand. Which way will I go? I want to ask you first of all, how much time do you spend in the Word? How much time do you spend on your knees? See, that is your GPS that speaks to your heart. If you have no relationship with anyone, if this room was totally dark, Joe, totally dark, no lights, couldn't feel your way around, and my wife was to get in the corner and speak my name, I'd know it over everybody in here because that's my companion. But we get in the midst of trouble and God tries to speak to us and we have no, we have no communication. So we don't even recognize his voice. So when you get in the midst of your trouble and say, how did I ever get here if God could speak to you? He would say, I tried to tell you, but you didn't even hear my voice. Preacher, I need a greater determination. These contacts in some of y'all's phones that should have done been erased. These people that you're talking to on a daily basis that you should never speak to. Are you trying to tell me to be a snob? No. But I'm telling you, you cannot handle the company that you're talking to. You got all kinds of people right here. Right here's your family. And if you'll get established and determined and have God as the forefront in your life. God might let you go back into their life after a while and try to win them, but not now. Because you're not ready, because they'll pull you right back in. And can I go ahead and tell you, you might not make it back the next time. Red, I may be standing over somebody's casket in a few days that thought they could handle it one more time. It's only by grace that some of y'all's here in it that all of us is here. But thank God for his mercy and prayers of somebody that has put a hand of God between you and eternity one more time. Preacher, I'll be honest. I'm watching things, listening to things, going places, talking to people that I know in my heart that got me before and I'm thinking they won't get me again. Look at me right here about three inches under this bald head. You're wrong. They'll get you again. You better come out from among the world and be separate and determined because the furnace is coming. And you and your God will be the only way you'll ever get through there. Out on the other side, when Nebuchadnezzar looked at them boys, he is proud of them. He is proud of them. And he's made a decree. Don't you ever say nothing about their God. How many people has folded before they ever got in the furnace. I have. I don't know the miracles that could have happened in my ministry if I'd have just been strong. Come on, talk to me. This morning, these people in this building while we're all standing. Help me, God. Help me. Help me, God. I need a greater determination to stand. See, that's all they had to do. It was the moral of the whole story. Stand. When you've done all that you can do, just stand. Preacher, these things going on in my life I need help with. Stand. Because when the furnace comes, the only thing that got burned off in this whole story was the things that had them bound. Preacher, these things that I need help with, I'm struggling with hatred, struggling with jealousy, you weren't supposed to name all that preacher. It's inside your head. And it's going to get you and captivate you and get you down and make you leave. Because the devil, if you listen to him long enough, he creates a story out of nothing. And pretty soon you'll be believing it. Does anybody want to pray this morning? Preacher, that's me.